show you the effects of the hemotoxin venom on, on blood, okay? You can already see pretty quickly it's kind of congealing, it's quite gloopy. And I'm beginning to wonder if that's such a good thing to be happening in my body. Sometimes I think, God, you know, that can't be good. I don't have a medical background. I have no fucking idea what it's doing to my body. If I did die due to snake venom or whatever, I'm sure it'll be quite funny to a lot of people. And they'll go, you see, you see. And even to myself, as I was floating out of my body and looking down below, I'm sure I'd be laughing my ass off. Like, you idiot! You're not supposed to inject snake venom, you fool. My name is Steve Ludwin, and I've been self-immunizing with various snake venoms for well over 20 years now. You know, I'm kind of embarrassed. I mean, I don't, I don't have that medical background. I, I, bear, I don't even have a proper American high school education. There's been quite a few uh, you know, doctors and scientists that have been horrified by my lack of you know, having things that are sterile and stuff like that. Have our lower Baja rattlesnake. And bang. You see that? That's one unhappy rattlesnake. Relax. I've always been in good health. I haven't had like something like the flu and coming up on nine winters, you know, and as I've gotten older, people have started to comment, oh wow, you don't seem like you're 46 years old. I had some doctors detest on my skin and they were all kind of a little bit baffled. Right, buddy. Oh, this girl doesn't really like it very much. This is why I'm always nervous holding a viper because they can, they can spin their fangs around and actually go through their lip to get your fingers. This snake is not wanting to be milked. Sometimes that happens. I had a quite an unusual sort of upbringing. I'm the son of a Pan Am pilot. I had a real catch me if you can, Leonardo DiCaprio sort of lifestyle. I had a credit card, it just said Pan Am on it with my name, Steve Ludwin, and I could get on any plane, as long as I was wearing a tie, for free. My father took me down to the Miami Serpentarium when I was about nine years old, and I got to meet this now famous herpetologist called Bill Host. He was the first Westerner to start injecting himself with snake venom. He started in 1948. I was very young and impressionable. I loved snakes. From that moment on, after meeting him, I was like, wow, you can become immune to snake venom? This is crazy. That's called vaccinology. It's the oldest form of medicine, apparently. When I was about 17, it was like, I've got to get that, that venom into me somehow. This is called a Pope's tree viper. And I'm a little bit wary of them, but it's a, it's a beautiful snake. I don't know if you can see those fangs. Do you see that fang? It's a hemotoxin. It's going to cause a massive tissue destruction. You know, people have died from these snakes, so you do not want that on your finger. I moved to London in 1987, and I started working in the East End. It was called the Vivarium, and basically my job for one pound 60 an hour was to unpack cobras and scorpions and tarantulas and reptiles, you know, for, for zoos and laboratories. I started bringing the venomous snakes home. My first time doing it was, was crazy. I had never even milked a snake before, and I just kind of had to figure it out on my own. So what I would do is I would take a, a scalpel and scratch, like, you know, two little scratch marks into my arm. I would take a little bit of the venom, and I would drop it into the cut. And you could feel it the first time. It was like, ah, that burns. I quickly washed it off. You know, because I was scared. I was like, what is this going to do? It kind of swelled up and, you know, my heart started pounding, not because of the venom, because it was like, oh my God, is this going to stop? Is, is, is it going to kill me? I had no idea. 
since people have kind of heard what I've been doing and stuff like that, I've seen a lot of people bitching. They're worse than like Star Trek fans, to be honest with you, reptile uh, people sometimes, you know. I always thought like, you know, when the internet came, I was like, wow, you can communicate with other people that have the same passion about about these animals, but it's not the case. There's a lot of bitchiness and, you know, who has the biggest snake? I don't keep big snakes. Guys that keep big snakes are hiding a, a secret. This is the last hemotoxic snake that goes into my snake bite cocktail. This is called an eyelash viper. This is one of the scariest snakes that I own. This is the snake that bit me. The worst pain that I've ever had in my life, and I've had, you know, lots of accidents with venom, but it felt like you would put your hand down on a marble table and someone took a sledgehammer and smashed it onto your pinky. But the funny thing is that that pain never subsided for eight fucking hours. And I had some scientists in the States saying, get yourself to the hospital. This is not a good snake to be bitten by. But I kind of waited it out. I had confidence that I was going to be OK. But it's a really aggressive snake, and it's really tricky to milk. There you go. Whoa, there's lots of venom coming out there. Thank you. So, those are our hemotoxins. I posted a really beautiful snake that I have on YouTube. Uh, it's called a Macrops Pit Viper. Just because I'm handling the snake, it's called free handling. There's death threats and, you know, people have just gone crazy. I could poke it in my eye a million times and it would not bite. These snakes can and will kill you. Everybody take a good long look. The moron attached to that arm is the reason why you have trouble keeping your reptiles legally. I'm not a moron attached to this arm. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> to think we lock up pedophiles and murderers when sickos like this are free to roam our streets. What's wrong with the world these days? Now, I think that's somebody being sarcastic. OK, here's a good one. You, to put it kindly, are an ignorant fucktard. I sincerely hope you get bit hard. And I strongly dissuade anyone watching this video from repeating the actions of this small penis individual, stupid dick hammer. Now that's good. That's good. This next snake is the Naja Kuthia, which is responsible for a lot of deaths every year. In the time that I've been working with the snakes, I've had some injections where I was a little bit cocky with it and got the dilution sort of wrong. They were like volcanoes. I had three of them. I had two on this leg and one down here. And they were growing and growing and burning. And for days, I was like, oh, god, I could feel this pressure. I touched it, and goo shot out five foot across onto the carpet. And I was just like, oh my god, oh fuck, you know, I'm fucked here. I got this like this massive needle for injecting horses or something. I put on some ACDC and it just gave me the strength just to, against all your will, just push this down and you could feel it going down into something. Do I have the nucleus yet? I'm pulling on this. No, I don't think I've got the nucleus. I think I've gone through it. Pull it back out, hit the nucleus and it was just like just pulling back on the most disgusting stuff that you'd ever want to see. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to squeeze it. And I squeezed this, but it actually made a sound. It was like I looked down in there, and there was a fucking hole in my leg. I could see inside my leg where all the tissue had sort of rotted away. And I noticed flies coming to it immediately. And it stunk. It was like death. It was rotting. I never want that happening again. You hear it? This is not the hemotoxic snake. This is something that's got the neurotoxin, the Naja Kuthia, which is the monocled cobra. Simple. And let go. Since I've kind of discovered the possibilities with the, the, the neurotoxin in this cobra venom. I've been using it in sporting activities recently and kind of testing it as kind of added a little bit of extra speed into my normal abilities. I've been doing tests on my skateboard. I, I 
from my house into the West End. I see how fast I can get in there. I just use the roads. Right. And I think the Cobra Venom helps with that. It's just sort of like, I, I, I go in between cars. I go in between buses. I go in the middle of the road. I just cane it. I feel like I've got so much energy and speed. When I'm skating, I've, I've, I've learned to actually start moving like a snake. And I found myself just kind of using that S shape, carving and carving. And it actually starts giving you a little bit of power. William Haast, director of the Serpentarium, has had much experience in handling cobras, but he still treats them with the greatest respect. Let's gather around, folks, but not too close. Bill Haast really is my Beatles and Rolling Stones and Beach Boys all wrapped in one. He died last year. He was just like two weeks shy of 101. He'd say that he hasn't been sick a day in his life. And it made me start thinking, okay, wow, there's something here. He was really my parameter of sort of going, is this dangerous? It's working for this guy. He was treating people with polio, people with MS. He had like 4,000 patients. He had people that couldn't even walk. And with the right doses and, and the right ingredients of his you know, medicines that contain various snake venoms, people, I've seen footage of it. They're like, they're playing basketball. But the FDA heard about what he was doing and they shut him down, you know, even though he was having such success with it. But the other thing that Bill Haas did, which is totally amazing, it's, it's miraculous, it almost sounds like a messiah. Because he was immune to these snake venoms, he's given his blood to snake bite victims that are dying, and then they survive. I've milked all the snakes. We've got hemotoxins in one glass. This is, this, this is the one that was kind of had the cocktails. So I'm drawing that venom up into the syringe. Now, so here is what I was saying earlier. There's no such thing as a poisonous snake. It is not poison. You see that venom coming out there? See it on my finger? You can do this completely safely. If you don't freeze it, I mean, it's just like food. It's a protein. It breaks down. So I have, you know, months and months worth of uh, various venoms. This is the hemotoxin. I'm going to put six. What I have here is water for injections. I will start on the actual raw venom, and then what we'll do is we'll use that injection. The first time I tried using the snake venom was it was pretty scary. You know, there was no there was no internet back then, but it felt really natural. It felt like it was instinct. This is not diluted. This is the pure venom. So now we're going to do an injection with the diluted hemotoxin. The benefits to the hemotoxins, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. You know, I, I feel like I need another 20 years to do it. I had some doctors test my DNA telomeres, and when I was 42, I scored as a 28-year-old. You know, perhaps there are some anti-aging properties to snake venom. I mean, it could all end tomorrow as well. I'm not saying I'm invincible. This is the shot glass that has the cobra venom, the neurotoxin. Get it all up. I'm going with two drops of this. This actual cobra that we're using is more venomous than a king cobra. One drop of cobra venom can kill 20 to 30 grown men. Yeah, I mean, it just feels, yo, it feels like a bee sting to start off with. You know, that, that cobra venom does have, have a bit of pain to it. It's like man versus food, you know, spicy chicken challenge. William Oliver. I'm 46 now. I'll have to see how many years I can go on continuing doing this, but you do think that it is quite taxing on the body. It is possible in two years' time my kidneys fail and, and I die you know, due to the venom of all those years, of all those toxins, all the swelling, all the, the decomposing flesh and the, the bruising. It all has to filter through your kidneys and your liver, and it's really bad stuff to be going through there. Okay. Yo, whoa, okay, that, that was a little bit more than five mil. If people want to know what it feels like, it feels like, you know, injecting Tabasco sauce and, you know, rubbing in a cut. It just burns. Is I will take another syringe here and just basically 
bring that raw venom down with the needle, which I, I quite like to work that. The, the, dilute, the diluting is something that's been quite new to me over the, like, the last four years that I've learned how to do and work properly. I was a bit nervous when I was today when I was you know milking the snakes, but when I do these injections, I don't think anything of it. I just once I know that the dilutions are right, it's as normal as anything for me now. I always kind of note the time just in case if I ever did have any problems where I did need to visit the hospital again, I would know. The one time I did have a serious overdose, I injected a, a three raw venoms a couple years ago, and I only wanted to put down a, a little bit in, and as I was pressing it, just went whoop, the whole thing went in. Within 45 minutes, my hand was like a, a baseball mitt, and the venom was swimming in my body. I had some friends come over because they knew I was fucked. They were saying, go to the hospital, go to the hospital, and I just didn't want to. And the next morning, I kept on waking up, and it wasn't going down, so I got begged to go to the hospital. They saw my arm and they said, what happened? And I said, snake bite. Three doctors came out and they said, well, what snake bit you? And I had to just say, um, well, I didn't get bit. There's three snakes. I purposely <laughs> injected it into my arm. They didn't know what to say. And the next thing I know, I was being taken into another room and one of the female doctors just came in and was just yelling at me and just saying, you idiot, you know, you can't do this. And they were telling me, you're gonna die and you're gonna lose your arm. I was in intensive care for three days, but I was kind of calm throughout the whole thing, but yeah, was, I don't want to ever repeat it. Since I had heard that the Americans and the Chinese got busted injecting racehorses with cobra venom and it was making them outperform their abilities, I immediately got excited. And I thought boxing would be a great thing to kind of, to see, is it possible that I could outperform my ability? I, I was working it harder last year when I was on my own. I actually felt like something was happening. I was like, holy shit, this, this stuff is working. It's amazing if you're discreet what you can get away with in London. <laughs> Bear Grylls, I hate that guy. In those films, he's like, oh, here's the snake, and you can just bite its head off, and he does. He's killed snakes on TV. That's my fucking family you're fucking around with. Oh, sorry, just kidding. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that, like, I'm not really feeling the pain, so that could be the other thing that helped those horses along. Why not find out why it's doing these things? If it's taking away pain, if it's giving you confidence or whatever, why not give it to your army? Christopher Columbus didn't go looking for America to discover America. He was looking for the fountain of youth. What does mankind want? They want to they live longer. Everyone wants to live longer. Apparently, there's something in, in snake venom that helps its uh, you know, food, uh, you know, food to accept death. I did feel that once, as I was lying there and I could feel the numbness in my head and stuff, I had this complete feeling of, oh well, I might die here, but I felt really happy to die. My heart's pounding. <laughs> You're alive for a good six to 12 hours. Like Starbucks has nothing on this. Yeah, that, I must admit that uh, it doesn't feel great. It's kind of like, it's kind of like jello in there. I mean, God knows what it's doing in there. I wish I understood what's happening beneath that skin. The next day is always the same with the Cobra Venom. It just feels like you're beaten up anyway. And then I have a, a good sort of four days where I sort of, I feel kind of quite charged. Go on, let's box. Go on, go on. There you go. There you go. How many years have you been doing this? Um, over 20 years, probably like 20 So you've been years quite ago. lucky then, really. Like, is there a risk that you take that venom and it could just kill you? 
it is kind of a little bit playing with fire. I've, I've had maybe three incidents in my life where it was borderline life-threatening. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is it's similar to someone taking heroin or cocaine or injecting it and taking a gamble. So you're gambling with your life every time you take it. I've gotten so used to it, I, can, I, I do it without thinking about it. And because I know the amounts and I know not to push it and where not to push it yeah. and stuff, it seems really safe to me. This certainly isn't physically addictive or, no. or it isn't pleasurable. So you believe you could stop tomorrow and stop taking it, stop doing it? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd like to do that very soon. I've done it for so long, I'd like to actually spend that. Have, have you ever... Have I'd you like ever, to take a year off. Have you, and you've, you've done that, you've managed that? No, I've never done it. I've never done it. I've never not done it. But I'd like to take like a year so off. So you're not going to know if it's addictive until you try it, so yeah. Is it possible you could be addicted to pain then, if you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I think if, if, if I was, I would have uh, other things in my life. I'd be a boxer. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. The day after going boxing, my arm just was even more swollen than the day before, but I felt like a truck had hit me. I felt like I was being digested from the inside, you know. I, I was walking around like the elephant man for a day. I, I can kind of remember it, but I was like in a dream state. I felt like I had been injected with, you know, a thousand energy drinks. It just felt slightly wrong. I would really like to work with a forward-thinking company that is going to go, okay, kid, we like your ideas, Let, let's start researching this and, you know, round the clock and get it done. I visited the University of Southern California a couple years ago and I met a Professor Frank Markland, I believe his name is. He's been working with Copperhead Venom. Copperhead venom is the North American pit viper that's being used. They've been studying the effects on, on breast cancer cells, ovarian cancer. It actually inhibits the growth of tumors and basically kind of kills off cancer cells. So there, there's a real excitement around that. Yeah, the possibilities of, of a cancer cure someday with snake venom, I'd put my money on it. Banana. Banana. <laughs> <laughs>